We've just had our first look at the Silent Hill 2 remake, so in this video I'm going to round up everything we know about the game so far and throw in the other Silent Hill projects that were announced at the same time. After months of rumours and speculation, Konami is remaking Silent Hill 2. During the Silent Hill transmission event, they showcased a three minute trailer that provided a look at James Sunderland and the mysterious foggy town in all its 4K glory. We also got a glimpse of Pyramid Head, alongside other notable elements from the original game. The event also revealed that Bloober Team will be developing the game, which wasn't a massive surprise as they've been rumoured to be working on a new Silent Hill project since they entered a strategic partnership with Konami in 2021. Notable titles from Bloober Team include Blair Witch, The Medium and Layers of Fear, so make of that what you will. Personally I found those titles to be a bit lacklustre and it doesn't fill me with confidence that they will be able to do justice to Silent Hill 2's complex themes. On a positive note though, Silent Hill 2 will once again feature music by Akira Yamaoka and creatures designed by concept artist Masahiro Ito, both of whom are veterans from the series and worked on the original game from 2001. So in terms of atmosphere and design, I'm hoping this means we'll at least see the style and ambience accurately recaptured with this remake. To be fair to Bloober Team as well, I've always found the atmosphere of their games to be great. It was just everything else I found to be mediocre. Speaking of the upcoming remake, producer Motoi Okamoto says during a video message, I'm personally very happy that this game, which is more than 20 years old, is being revived again as a new game in the form of a remake. The remake has a new musical style, new challenges, and sound design and music that will be able to please the existing fans, and of course, for players who still don't know Silent Hill 2. So it sounds to me that this won't be a frame by frame remake, but they're aiming to please both fans of the franchise as well as newcomers. The most likely comparison at the moment is perhaps the Resident Evil remakes, which have been mostly well received. Hopefully they don't stray too far from the original, as it is still considered a classic to this day, and there's no need to fix it if it ain't broken. Although naturally there will be some significant differences, given how much technology has come along in the past 21 years. To further emphasise their intent to stay faithful to the original, developers at Bloober Team also joined the video call to say that they're working closely with the original creators to stay true to the game's vision. There was a major change announced to the gameplay though, which is that the game will have an over-the-shoulder camera view, as opposed to the third-person view from the original, further fueling comparisons to the Resident Evil games. Speaking of this decision, creative director Matthias Lennart says, while we want to achieve the same end result, player expectations evolve over time, and certain things need to be modernised to have the same or similar effect. For example, that's why we went with the over-the-shoulder camera so we can immerse players into the game world as much as possible. So basically, we'll be seeing what James sees, which will make the game more immersive and keep players on edge. Over on PlayStation Blog, Lennart broke down some more ways they intend to make Silent Hill 2 more immersive, he elaborates that they'll be rebuilding the combat system and certain set pieces. Mentioning the combat system is an interesting point, and makes me wonder whether they'll be making this game more action orientated, as James wasn't the most physically capable of protagonists. I hope that this isn't the case though, as this would potentially undermine one of the key themes of the game. While comparisons to the Resident Evil remakes just keep on coming, it doesn't necessarily mean that the combat will follow suit. It could work well if Bloober Team adopts combat more similar to The Last of Us, where the characters feel very real and grounded and are constantly on the verge of being overpowered. What I believe is key, though, is that James doesn't feel too capable. Development of Silent Hill 2 will utilise the Unreal 5 game engine, and some further details have been provided on the specific features that will really shine. They're using Lumen and Nanite to raise the graphics to new, highly detailed, realistic levels, while further heightening the already nerve-inducing atmosphere. As the name suggests, Lumen is the technology that will allow developers to create fully dynamic lighting in real time, much similar to graphics generated by advanced computers for high-quality animation and film production. Nanite is the most unique offering of UE5, allowing game developers to automatically and massively scale in-game art assets. With Nanite's virtualized micro-polygon geometry, Artists get full freedom to create as many geometric details as the eye can see. So game developers can now add high quality assets used in movies without worrying about performance issues. 
They ensure that the same concept of level of detail is applied without affecting the original quality of the assets. So with these two features of Unreal 5 being used, I think it's safe to say that we can expect to see lifelike detail and great lighting. So it will be interesting to see what the graphical update does to the creatures of Silent Hill. The first look at Pyramid Head was certainly promising. This will be a PS5 console exclusive while also releasing on Steam. Apparently the game will delight PlayStation 5 players visually, auditorily and sensorily. So I'm interested to see how they utilise the capabilities of the DualSense controller and the Pulse 3D headset. Konami have released the system requirement for PC players as well and they're tough. As originally reported by PC Gamer, the Steam page has revealed the recommended system specs, which include an RTX 2080 or AMD Radeon 6800 XT graphics card, as well as an Intel Core i7 8700K or AMD Ryzen 5 3600X equivalent processor with 16 gig of RAM. These system specs will deliver medium quality visuals at 60 frames per second, or high quality visuals at 30 frames per second and 1080p. 4K can be achieved, but only with DLSS or similar technology enabled. Konami hasn't yet shared what specs will be required to run the game at 60 frames per second with high settings. But given the system requirements for just 30, it would likely be outside of my budget, along with a lot of other people's. Minimum requirements have also been shared, which should enable low or medium quality at 30 frames per second. At present, there is no confirmed release date for this game either. So the bar is high for this remake. Can Konami and Blueber Team deliver? I'm not 100% convinced, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. On a side note though, why not start with Silent Hill 1? Not content with only remaking Silent Hill 2, Konami seem to be aiming for the full exhumation of the entire franchise. More games were also announced, the first of which is Silent Hill Townfall. Little was revealed other than the mysterious trailer which features a man talking over a walkie-talkie and a portable retro TV. The trailer then ends with grainy footage of a man wearing glasses. This title will be published by Annapurna Interactive and developed by No Code, a Glasgow-based developer whose previous titles include Stories Untold and Observation. John McKellen, the creative director, said Townfall respects the source material but also does something a little bit different with it. That's about all we know so far, but McKellen has stated that more information will be coming next year. There's also a film on its way, and admittedly those films are complete guilty pleasures of mine, despite the fact that they kind of shit all over the games. If I recall correctly, one of them also featured a rare occasion in which Sean Bean made it to the end of the film still alive. But to the announcement... Return to Silent Hill will be directed by Christopher Gans, who brought you the 2006 movie. This sounds terrible already, and I'm all here for it, but why they've let him come back is a complete mystery to me. Filming and casting is still in the works, so this one won't be out for a while. Next up we have yet another game, Silent Hill Ascension. This one appears to be some kind of live and possibly interactive experience set within the Silent Hill universe. The trailer does look like you're watching a live stream and ends with Live 2023. So this definitely sounds more like a live stream event rather than an actual game release, which we'll be seeing sometime next year. We learn during the transmission event that it's being made through partnership with streaming software tools company Genvid, the gaming arm of JJ Abrams production company Bad Robot, and video game to TV specialist production company DJ2 Entertainment. I had no idea just how many adaptations were in the works, with Little Nightmares, Tomb Raider and Sleeping Dogs all on their IMDb page. We also learned that Ascension was inspired by watching streamers play Silent Hill with their audiences and the feeling of being scared together. It's a live, real-time interactive series where audiences are able to change the outcome of the story and participate in scenes. There is also no reset button, we're told, so the outcomes are set and the fans will have the chance to shape Silent Hill canon forever. Finally, Silent Hill F was announced. This will be yet another game and a new Silent Hill story set in 1960s Japan, as written by Japanese virtual novel specialist Ryukishi 07, known for the When They Cry series. Its characters and creatures are designed by Keira, and its producer is Motoi Okamoto. The game will be developed by Neobards Entertainment, 
who have previously worked with Capcom as a support studio on several of its Resident Evil games, most recently the soon-to-be-released Reverse. No other information, including release dates, is currently available, but this trailer is the most exciting one by far for me personally. Well, that was a lot to unpack there, with some interesting projects along the way. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do any of these interest you? Or will you be pretending none of this exists and enjoy a playthrough of the original games instead? Thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, please do consider liking the video. And if you want to see more content from me, please do consider subscribing. Thank you.